The project at the Hubbard Bridge is to replace the hangers, and the, the hangers are the cables that go between the main cable at a high level and the bridge deck. So they're ultimately responsible for keeping the bridge deck supported and the bridge users safe. Each of the elements of the bridge has got a structural life and it's typical that they get replaced and we've reached that point. So we need to take them out and do some testing on behalf of the client and then try and predict how long those existing cables can stay in place. The project to look at the hangers was part of our long-term asset management strategy for the bridge. We knew that the Hummer Bridge was coming to that point in time when we had to think about replacing the hangers. We realised it was technically challenging um, in a temporary work situation and also because of the environment that the bridge obviously is. So because of the complex nature of the scheme, we were looking for a contractor with a can-do attitude and one that could bring problems that were solved to the table, not bring a problem to the table. So working closely with our consultants Atkins and Spencers, we worked through the scheme from a sort of buildability viewpoint from a desktop to make sure that we had every angle covered. Getting the cables out is quite a complicated process. The Humber Bridge is a listed structure, so the sockets that go on the end of the hangers have to be aesthetically exactly the same. And the biggest challenge is they don't know how much load is in each of the individual hangers. They've got a theoretical load from the time of construction, but we found that that is quite varied. Manufacturing the new hanger cable to the correct length is extremely difficult, especially when you've got bespoke sockets on the end because you get a thing called socket draw and that affects the loaded length of the hanger. So if the hanger's five mil too long, it won't carry any load. So the tolerances that we're working to are very, very tight. The works are undertaken at night, and that's one, to reduce disruption to the traveling public and bridge users, and two, because we want the bridge to be as lightly loaded as possible. We want to keep the traffic down to a minimum because we ultimately are gonna take one of the hangers out. So we do it at night, we close the adjacent carriageways, one on either side to try and keep the loading balanced on the bridge, and then we can replace the hangers. We attach temporary clamps at deck level, and then we have some high strength rods that attach to some jacks, and those jacks react against the end of the cable of the socket. The jacks push the socket down, and that takes the load out of the pin that joins the hanger to the bridge deck. Because you don't know the load within the hangar, you're trying to jack the bridge and record very, very tight tolerances or tight movements in the bridge to try and estimate when that pin is load free. Because if you jack it too far, you've trapped it with the jacks. And if you don't jack it far enough, it's still carrying the weight of the bridge. Once there's no weight in the pin, you can press it out. And once the pin's gone, you can release the jacks and ultimately there's no load in the cable. The connection at high level is to the main cable. So the ones we were doing were only 10 meters long. Some of the longest hangers on the bridge are 120 meters long. We at Spencer Group designed our own access system that sits on the cable. So we've got a secure working environment that we can use our hoist to take the dead load of the cable and undertake all the hoisting operations. Once you've got rid of the weight of the bridge, you're only dealing with the dead load of the hanger that you're trying to replace. So the loads are significantly less. So it's the same process except you can do it with just manual hoists. Although the bridge is designed to be, to be able to support itself without a hang cable in place, it's important to be able to measure the loading in the adjacent areas of the bridge. So we had structural health monitoring in place and that records the change in load in the adjacent hangers. So at the point where we take the pin out and lower the bridge deck off, the support of that area of the bridge is then passed to the two adjacent hangers and we monitored the, the stress in those adjacent hangers to make sure they weren't overstressed during the works. The whole process worked really well. The testing element is putting the existing cables in a stressing bed and ultimately destroying them by pulling them to the point that they break and also doing fatigue testing. So we stretch them to the load that we expect to be in the hangar and then we oscillate it, same as it would in its existing condition, except we do it a bit quicker so that we can accelerate that fatigue case and ultimately, again, it'll probably destroy the cable. The project at the Humber Bridge is a perfect example of where Spencer are able to undertake routing construction tasks in difficult environments. We design our own access platform to work at height on the main cable. And then we've got people who specialise in using the jacking equipment and planning the works to be able to get the pins out and undertake the hoisting operations and 
execute the cranage and just generally work in those difficult environments. Working on the Humber Bridge is, is always brilliant for us at Spencer Group. The Humber Bridge is the largest suspension bridge in the UK. It's, it's a local and national iconic structure and it's a masterpiece of engineering and it's a great place to work.